In this video, we're going to take a look at the game object menu. Now, starting at the very top of the game object menu, we have the ability to create an, a completely empty game object, which there's actually a couple of these already in my hierarchy view, so I'm going to delete those out before I create any more. But if we go and create an empty game object, boom, we get one. It's called game object by default. It has nothing inside of it. I don't want this to turn into a discussion of game objects, but if for any reason you need a generic game object onto which you can attach other components, that's how you do it. Uh, you can either do it straight from the, the game object menu like I just did, or of course you can hit control shift N. Now you can create other things in here as well, other game objects that uh, are common that you might have brought in through some of the other Unity packages. As you can see, things like particle systems, cameras, uh, point lights, cubes, just to name a few. Moving down from here, you have some various commands which work with your game objects and can help you deal with uh, parenting, with where pivots are, deal with positioning. Kind of like, uh, that's almost like hidden transformation functionality. The first one is center on children. And this one isn't exact, it's not, I don't want to say it's painfully obvious, it's not painfully obvious the first time you see it. Let me show you how this works. Uh, let's go to create other, and I'm going to create a sphere. And we'll move this up so that we can see it. And let's see, front and center. So press F, hi, we've got a sphere. Now, uh, earlier I created an empty game object. Let me actually delete that because I want to keep everything as uh, visual as I can. So here we've created a sphere. Let's also create something else. So we'll go back up to game object, create other, and this time we'll make a cube. So two very different objects as we can see here. Now I'm going to parent the cube to the sphere. Now I can do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, so let's try to keep everything as game object menu oriented as I possibly can. What I'm going to do is select the cube, and then I'm going to select the sphere at the same time. Now I did that by holding down the shift key here inside the viewport. If you were doing it here inside the hierarchy view, you'd want to make sure that you were actually using the control key because it's kind of like a list. So I'm going to select the cube first, select the sphere, come back up to the game object menu. It's the reverse. It's the reverse. Yep, you're thinking in Maya again. That's a, yeah, I'm used to selecting child and parent, and here inside of Unity, uh, you're selecting parent first and then child. And in this case, I'm not really concerned with which one comes first, but let's just make sure everybody was familiar with the order in which I did select these. Let's just start off with the cube first, and then the sphere. And when I come up under game object and choose make parent, take a look at what happens. The sphere gets parented under the cube. So it's select parent first, and then child, then you can come up underneath game object and choose make parent. Now usually I don't do that. Uh, really when I need to parent one thing to another, I just drag here inside the hierarchy view and that takes care of it for me. So if I know I want to make the sphere a child of the cube, I simply grab the sphere, drag it on top of the cube, and that does the same thing. But now that we've done that, we can take a look at selecting our cube, which is the parent. So as I move it, you can see the sphere comes along. Go back under game object and we can say center on children and what that does is that moves our parent object so that it is in the center of all of the various children. Now, right now, we only have the one child. So to show you how this really works, I'm going to hit Control-Z. Oh, that's actually a non-undoable kind of feature. That's okay. Uh, we'll just grab the sphere, and I'll slide it out to get some separation. Now, I'm going to duplicate this sphere a couple of times. So I'm going to hit Control-D, and that gives me another sphere. We'll move this duplicate kind of down here, and I'll hit Control-D again and move this one over here. Now it's kind of it's stuck halfway through the ground, but that's okay. It's still going to get the point across. Now, notice again, the cube is the parent of all of these objects. So wherever it goes, the others go as well. But now if I have the cube selected and I go to game object, center on children, it moves to the exact center of all of its children. So now you get to a really uh, clear demonstration of how that works. Now we've already seen make parent. We can clear a parent as well. This only works if you have a child selected. So if I grab this one sphere, and this is the, the uppermost sphere, we can go to game object, clear parent, and now it's no longer parented. Again, I never ever do this. I do everything through dragging 99% of the time. So if I parent the sphere back to the cube by dragging it on top, I can unparent just by dragging it out until I see a little tiny line in between the two, and that means I'm separating them from their parent. Now, moving down the menu, we have move to view, align with view, and then align view to select it. Now, these are all dependent on what you're doing with the uh, viewport camera at the moment. First off, we have move to view. Let's see how this works. Here I have the topmost sphere selected, and let's just navigate the viewport. 
way out here in the middle of nowhere. And I know, let's just say I'm working, and I know for a fact I need to talk to this sphere. I need to see it. I need it right here where I'm looking. We can say sphere, front and center, by going to game object, move to view, and boom, there it is. Front and center, right in front of you. Now, that's only one way to move that around. If I hit Control z it goes back to right where it was. Now, if we go back to game object and say align with you, at first, it, it actually kind of looks like we magically get some crosshairs. <laughs> and with some objects, it'll look like nothing happened at all. What did happen is that that object we had selected moved to the exact same position and orientation as the camera. So if I move the camera back, we can see our sphere. This is a very convenient way to position things like cameras in your scene, as well as things like spotlights. Mm -hmm. You could take your, uh, your camera and just look exactly where you want that spotlight to be, and then say, align with view, and boom, spotlight will just pop right to that location. Now, the final thing we have is align view to selected. And what this is going to do is take this uh, camera that's currently powering our scene view, and it will move it and orient it to align with whatever we have selected. So currently you can see that the Z axis, the blue axis of our sphere is pointed toward this cliff and I currently have that sphere selected. So I'm gonna move way over here into the middle of nowhere again, so really far away. But I still have that sphere selected and I'll go under game object and choose align view to selected and it moves us right to that exact same position and orientation. This is a very convenient way if you already have something like a spotlight or a directional light set up and you need to see what exactly it's pointing at, you can just select that light and then perform this operation. You can align your view to it and you'll fly right to it and you'll be looking exactly at what it's looking at. It's also uh, very handy if you have other cameras that you need to kind of look down for just a moment. So that is a quick look at the functionality of the game object menu, which is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.